In this video, we will learn how to create and use funnel reports in Google Analytics 4. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania YouTube channel, where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. And if you want to stay up to date with Google Analytics 4, consider subscribing to this channel. Let's be honest, funnel reports in Universal Analytics were quite meh. And the only exception could be enhanced e-commerce funnel reports that were actually quite useful. But things have changed in Google Analytics 4. In the Analysis Hub, we have a new type of report for funnels. And the best thing is that they are retroactive. This means that if you have been already tracking a certain events, you can use it in the funnel report on the fly. Even though there are still some limitations in the new funnel reports, they still look quite promising. To get started, you should log into your Google Analytics 4 property and then go to Analysis, Analysis Hub. Here you should click the funnel analysis right here. And here you will find a predefined report that you can edit. So for example, if you want to start over, you should click access on all the steps in the steps section right here. Another way to get started with a clean funnel report would be to click on the blank right here in the same analysis hub section. So click it right here and then click plus icon and select funnel analysis. And that way you will also start with a fresh empty report. If you have ever tried to work with the analysis hub in GA4, you will probably notice that the interface in funnel analysis is quite similar to other parts of the analysis hub. For example, exploration reports. We have three columns. One is variables. So here you will find segments, dimensions that can be used in this report. Then we have tab settings. So this part is directly responsible for what you will see in this output. And the largest portion of the interface is taken by the actual output, which is the report that you are going to generate. If you want to use a dimension in the tab settings right here, for example, maybe you want to break down the data not by the device category, but by some other parameter, then you should make sure that the dimension that you are interested in is added to this list. And you can do that by clicking this plus icon and then looking for a particular dimension. In Google Analytics, dimension is an attribute that describes a certain thing. For example, it might be product ID, might be transaction ID, might be event name, a device category or something else. Also, if you want to compare how different segments are completing your funnel, then you should make sure that these segments are included in the segments section right here. The best way to explain how to work with the funnel analysis report, I believe, is to show an actual example. Therefore, let's build a pretty simple funnel based on the e-commerce data that I have in this report. In fact, right now I'm using a Google Analytics 4 demo account that you can also access. And if you want to learn more how to get started with it, I will post a link to another video below this video. So on this property, we already have some e-commerce data. For example, product views, product clicks, then when a product is added to a cart, when the checkout is started and so on. So let's start with a simple funnel. We will see how many people have seen products, then added them to cart and then made a purchase. So in order to add funnel steps to this report, you should click on the pencil icon right here in the steps section. And then you will have to define all the steps that you are interested in. When it comes to Google Analytics for e-commerce tracking, Google requires you to send certain event names with some additional parameters about that interaction. For example, what kind of products were included in that particular interaction. So if I want to see product views as a first step in this funnel, I have to click right here to add new condition and then enter view item with underscore. This is the event name that Google requires you to send to Google Analytics 4 if you want to track product views. So click view item, then let's add another step. And here we can select whether we want the second step to happen immediately after the first step. But in this case, let's say that I'm interested in indirectly followed by. Then if you want, for example, to see how many people have completed the next step within a certain period of time, for example, within five minutes after the first step was completed, then you can click this checkbox and then select within five minutes or, you know, within five five days or so on. But in this case, I will not use this. And then in the second step, I will enter add to cart. This is another event that is required to be named exactly like this if you want to properly implement e-commerce tracking in GA4. In fact, I can name these steps as well. So these are just labels, but they will be visible in the report. And then the last step will be the purchase. So let's see how many people actually make a purchase after they add at least one product to their cart. So click add step right here and then enter purchase then click add new condition and search for purchase. In order to apply all of these steps to the report, click apply in the top right corner. And here you will see the number of users who have seen at least one product, then the number of users who have added at least one product to a cart, and then how many users actually made a purchase. 
Below this chart, you will also see a table, which is a breakdown table. And this is available because we have selected the device category dimension right here. In fact, I haven't selected it, but it was selected by default. But if you want, you can use another dimension instead of this for the breakdown. But I would like to remind you one more time is that if you want to use some dimension in the breakdown and you cannot see that dimension right here, you should click the plus icon and then add this dimension to this column. Sometimes you might end up with funnels where let's say the first column is very tall and then all the other funnel steps are very, very small and you cannot even see them properly. Luckily for that, we have a zoom feature that you can use by clicking this plus icon like this, or you can just hover your mouse over this chart and then scroll up or down. If you zoom in a lot, what will happen is that you will see this wave right here. So this indicates that the column should be actually much taller than it is displayed in this report. Another good thing, which was also available in the enhanced e-commerce funnels, is that if you want to build an audience of this column, you can just do the right click on this bar and then you can create a segment from this user. Also, if you want to build a segment and you want to include only those people who dropped off from this step, then you can do the right click on this number right here and then also create a segment from abandonments. Then another cool thing in the report is the visualization. There are actually two types of visualizations right now. Currently in my screen, you're seeing the standard funnel, but looking at this funnel is quite difficult to see how this funnel and how different steps were changing over time. So if you want, you can click here and choose trended funnel. That way you will see how each step was changing throughout the time. And for example, if you hover right here, you will see that only product views right now is highlighted. Also, you will see additional tabs for each step in the funnel and you can view only the isolated view of that particular step. All right, so now let's go back to the standard funnel. And one more thing that I wanted to mention is that by default, all funnels in the funnel analysis report are closed. This means that visitors must start from the very first step in the funnel in order to appear in this report. But if it is okay for you that visitors will enter the funnel at any other step as well, then you can click this toggle right here and then you will make the funnel open. Later in this video, I will explain the difference between open and closed funnels in greater detail. Another thing to mention is that, for example, if a visitor lands on the first step, then skips the second step and then enters the third step, that visitor will be treated as dropped off after the first step. Because in funnel analysis reports, visitors cannot skip steps. Now let's focus a bit more on the table below this chart. So here we have the breakdown dimension. We have the name of the step. And also in each step, we see the completion rate. This shows how many users advanced from the step one to step two of this funnel. And obviously because of that, we can also see the abandonment rate. So this means how many people entered the step, but did not advance to the next step of the funnel. Right clicks are available in this table as well. So for example, if you want to see the list of all users who have completed this particular step and that are you know, desktop, then you can do the right click right here and click view users. Since I'm working on the demo account, I cannot use this feature because the user explorer feature is disabled for privacy reasons in this property. But if you're working on your own, you will be able to click this and then a new tab will appear with the user explorer data from this particular group of people. Then another cool feature is that you can quickly drill down into a certain group of people. So for example, let's say that I want to see this funnel, but right now I'm interested only in desktop users. So I can do the right click right here and then include only these users. Then what will happen is that a filter will be applied to this report and then I will isolate the data and we'll see only how desktop users are behaving in the funnel. If you want to go back, you can then click the undo button right here. Another cool feature which was very long awaited in Google Analytics is elapsed time. So if you click this toggle, you will then see a new column appear, which is called elapsed time. So this column shows how much time does it usually take your users to advance from one step to another. So for example, right here, we see that it takes a bit more than one day for visitors who added products to a cart to actually make a purchase. One more feature that I would like to mention is the next step. So for example, if you see a huge drop off in a certain step, you might be interested, well, where the users are going, or for example, what are they doing instead? So in this case, what you could do is that you could add a dimension to the next action section right here. So let's add event name and see what other events are happening after that particular funnel step. So here, for example, I can hover my mouse right here and I will see that top five other actions are not only view item, but also page view, scroll, select item or add to cart. Well, in this case, I don't see this to be very useful, but in your case, that might actually help. And now let's go back to one particular setting that I promised to dive deeper into. And that setting is 
make open funnel. Let's take a closer look at how the data is processed in open funnels and in closed funnels. Let's start with the open funnel. Let's say that my funnel consists of three steps, which is A, B, and C. And then I have four users that have somehow interacted with this funnel. The first user completed all three steps. The second user entered the funnel only in the step B and then completed the step C. Then I have the third user who has completed the first step, then skipped the second step and then completed the third step. And then finally, I have the fourth user that has entered just the step three. By the way, I have taken this situation from the official Google's documentation about funnel analysis. So let's take a look how funnel analysis will treat each one of these user interactions. Let's start with the first user. So the user entered in the step A, so this will be counted in the funnel analysis. Then step B and step three will also be counted in the funnel report. Now let's take a look at the user number two. Once again, we're now talking about the open funnel. An open funnel means that a visitor can enter the funnel at any step. Therefore, step B and step C will also be counted in the funnel report. Then let's take a look at the third user. This user has entered the funnel in the very beginning. so. This is okay, this will be counted. However, the second step of the funnel, which is step B, was skipped. Therefore, this user will be counted as a drop-off after the step A. And then the fourth user. This user entered the funnel at the very end, but this will be counted because in open funnel, if a visitor enters the funnel in any step, this will be counted. So if we take a look at the total numbers of the funnel report, it will look like this. We have two users in the first step, then two users in the second step, and then we will have three users in the third step. And if we take a look how this funnel report will look visually, it will look like this. We have two users in the first step, then we have a drop off because there is only one user and that is user one that has moved from one step, I mean from the first step to the second step. However, another user entered the funnel only in step B. Therefore, that user will be displayed like this. So if you see in your report this kind of line, this means that these users actually entered this step from the previous step and these users entered this step from, I don't know, from somewhere, but not from the previous step. And then both of these users, so I'm talking about user one and user two, they moved to the step C, but also user number four entered this step as well. Therefore, we have three users in the third step. Now let's take a look at the very same situation, but this time the funnel is closed. So all three steps will be counted in the report of the first user. Then speaking of the second user, step B and step C will not count it because the required first step is skipped. Then we have user number three. So the first step will be counted, but step C will not be counted because step B was skipped. This is not counted in neither open nor closed funnels. And then user number four will not be counted because step A and step B were skipped. So if we count the total numbers in this funnel, they will look like this. In the first step, we have two users. In the second step, we have one user. And in the third step, we have one user. And visually, it will look like this. We have two users in the first step, then we have a drop off and only one user moved to the second step and that very same user moved to the third step. Oh, and one more thing that I forgot to mention is how to apply segments to funnel analysis reports. So here we have several predefined segments like US, direct traffic and so on. So let's say that I want to compare how US traffic is performing in this funnel against non-US segment. So I have the US segment right here, so I can just double click it and it will be automatically added to segment comparisons section right here. And then let's create a new segment for non-US users. So click plus right here, then click user segment, and then let's enter country ID does not exactly match US. And let's name the segment non-US save and apply. And this segment is already automatically added to this comparison. And here we can see how different segments are performing in this funnel. If you hover your mouse on the blue color, you will see how one segment is performing and then you will see how other segment is performing. Well, this screen is a bit too small to fit in all the table data right here. But if we want, we can, for example, get rid of the breakdown dimension right here and then see only the segment data right here. All right, so I hope that now you are more familiar with funnel reports in Google Analytics 4 and you will be able to build them on your own. What part of the funnel reports do you like the most and what features are you still missing? Let me know in the comments below. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. And also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics 4, consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.